We'll have a non-recording Crackcast, like after Crackcast or something, where we just do a karaoke night. I still have to be drunk for that. (laughs) (laughs) Bands can sing Pony. I want to hear that. Hello and welcome to the Drunk Duck Quackcast. This is Ozone Ocean. With me is Baines and Tant Serene. Hello. 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 And uh, this is uh, <laughs> number 614, one week before Christmas. This is the penultimate cast before Christmas. And this week we're talking about team-ups and super friends and... Suicide squads, Doom Patrols, Heroes Alliances, all this kind of stuff where you have a big group of superheroes in a team. The old tradition of teaming up to make a awesome group that can go and face problems together and just be pulling their resources and pulling the fans and everything and really making an enjoyable piece of fiction for us to all enjoy. It's like a, a type of crossover, I guess. Yeah, it they often be. are. They, they, they well, often you have, are. You have, you have ongoing stories and comics, of course, you know, it's about the team. I mean, they're, they're not always crossovers, but yeah, they, um, they're, they're a cool, cool things to have. Rather than a single solitary superhero, doing all the stuff by themselves we have the teams working off each other's strengths and weaknesses and complementing each other so that that's the coolest aspect you know like the Iceman freezes everything and then the fireman explodes it or whatever <laughs> <You know? laughs> Superman does his thing and then he gives everybody a little chance to do their own thing <laughs> Before we get into that, got to bring up the feature. Quite a guck say gave us a great little feature this week called Domestic Hell Land. So, Quai, please tell us about Domestic Hell Land. Hello, this is Quite a say, and the feature I've selected for this week is Domestic Hell Land by Sheep Shikets, and it is rated M for Mature. Lily first draws the attention of Satan, the devil. After drafting a contract signed in blood while a 16-year-old student at an all-girls Catholic high school, two years later, Satan has returned, and this time, Lily has been waiting, with her bedroom walls plastered in Rosemary's Baby and the Devil's Bride film posters. Tick. Talk. A late-night diner conversation between Satan and Lily results in an outpouring of subconscious desires like starting a family? The art style is really modern, with clean lines and coloring on par with cartoon animation. The color palette is black and white line art against a monochromatic purple backdrop with scarlet rouges used to emphasize blood. Find out if Lily will follow through with her side of the contract and read Domestic Hellland by Sheep Shickets. Rated M. And that was quite a guxe with her featured domestic hello. All right, now um, normally we'd have the featured music that Gum Wallace would beautifully record for us every single time. You know, he creates this new piece of music. He's just a master. But this week, no. This is one of the rare times when he hasn't been able to. Very, very rare when he hasn't been able to give us a featured uh, tune. This week it's because him and his whole family came down with COVID. So, you know, that's no good. Still going around. It's not over. Yeah. Please take care of yourselves out there, especially now that people tend to to forget that it exists. And it is... We pretend to ourselves that it doesn't exist. Yeah. Just take care of yourselves and get better. Yeah, so I'll play a tune and I'll pick this later. I don't know what it will be, but I'll pick one of the the old Gum Wallace tunes. Instead of just picking one of my favourite Gum Wallace tunes, I decided to pick a whole bunch of my favourites from this year. Sort of a retrospective. So, first up, Ark Hunters. 
notes cascading and calibrating before committing and tumbling down and along in a continuous torrent a cataract of notes flowing and burning outwards acoustic and electronic guitar violin piano and percussion vying continuously okay so take it away gum wallace with your theme to arc hunters Hunters, which is a comic by Tom Bag rated T. Okay, next up, another favourite of mine from this year was Eva of Asgard. Thunderclaps followed by a slow, steady downpour that gradually increases in strength before collapsing into a furious, chaotic storm of electric guitar-driven hard rock. An electric guitar strikes like lightning, illuminating the piece in sharp relief till the metal tempest blows itself out and fades away. comic by Sinwells rated T. Next up, Caveston. Authoritative violin pronounces and directs, a four-stringed general deciding the course of action, laying out the battle plan. Electric guitar listens well and leads the squad on a furious audio assault, storming forth and prevailing in a mighty show of shock and awe. <laughs> Thank you. 
travels with his theme to Caveston, which is a comic that is rated T, and it's by Caveston. Hmm. All right, next up, we have the theme to Rat Test Blues, which isn't a comic at all. This is Gunmuller's doing his own thing here, which is ironic because he has COVID at the moment. Well, the dangers of, of COVID and the worries of it are universal, and New Zealand is no exception. Here, Mr. Gunmuller's gives voice to his and all our apprehensions when faced with a malady, when there's a pandemic about, do I have COVID or just a cold? Only the rapid antigen test can say for sure. Awesome blues number, the guitar roars and sings and Gun Wallace's vocals are perfect. So take it away Gun Wallace with Rat Test Blues. <laughs> for which there is no comic. Get well soon, Gamalas. Okay, next up, we have another theme. It's the theme to Into the Bookwoods. A folksy, calming journey into dark green, misty warm depths and golden lit fields in afternoon sun, an acoustic-driven piece with the pleasing sounds of plucked wire strings. comic by Kval Hissia, and it's rated... hmm, I'm not sure. Okay, so next up we have theme to Britney Hyperstyle, and this was the theme on Quacker 600, and this is the sixth of the themes that I've presented at the moment. So here we are, sixth of the themes, and it's for Quacker 600, Britney Hyperstyle. Bouncy, pop bubblegum bubbles of light and joy floating, rising and falling in sweet-smelling conduction currents. This sound is pink and powder blue with a sheen of iridescence. Synth electronica. That's fun, light and happy.
as a theme to Britney Hyper Style, which is a comic by Shampoo Venom. Rated T. Come on, let's did us proud with all those lovely tunes. I hope you like that little retrospective of those six of my favourites from the year. So here we are, back to the Quack Cast. So back to the Quack Cast on Super Team, Super Friends, Doom Patrol, Suicide Squads. There's the big crossover things. Heroes Alliance was the big drunk duck crossover. And there are also teams that are just, you know, designed as teams like X Men. That was a team from the beginning. They weren't single solitary heroes. And uh, yeah, Tarts or Ring. Fantastic Four or something. Oh yeah, always a team. Yeah, really cool mm-hmm. bunch of bunch of characters. And mm-hmm. Tarzan, you like uh, American Hero or something? My Life as an American Hero. Yeah, uh, it is a web comic that we host here, uh, yeah. which is uh, three sisters uh, that fight crime, and they are also like superheroes in various ways I, I don't remember it too clearly and I really apologize about that I just remember that there are three cool girls that do it then there's one with two cool girls called Chatterbox it's a super mm. team yeah that's true I didn't even think of it because it's a duo really but yeah they are part of the uh, the group mm. Two more than come in. Yeah, it's true. Exactly. So Baines, our very own Baines, is behind the greatest superhero team up that the world has ever seen. <laughs> yeah, since the Wizard of Oz. Oh yes. <laughs> so the Wizard of Oz. This this was inspired by Baines doing a news post, like like pointing out that the Wizard of Oz actually features a super team. Okay, the, this it was actually. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. You go. Um. No, it's okay. I'm sorry. Um. I didn't express it very well, I don't think, but like what I was trying to get at, because it made a huge impression on me when um, there was a scene with the running through the poppy fields in The Wizard of Oz, Hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. this field of poppies that the Wicked Witch set up, I guess, to make the group fall asleep, (laughs) Um, only affected Dorothy, the lion, and Toto. And the Tin Man and the Scarecrow were not affected by breathing in the pollen because of their nature. You know, they, they don't breathe kind of thing. So I thought, and I remember seeing that as a kid, and it made a huge impression on me. Not It didn't surprise me, but I just thought, like, I understood that because I was into comics and superheroes and stuff like that. And I understood that, oh, like the nature, like the different characters have a different nature. And it's really fun when something about their nature is shown whether it's a gift and it's probably not even so much with powers or weapons in that instance it's just like something about them affects things in a certain way so they're more vulnerable to something or less vulnerable vulnerable to something else Um, yeah so they they have complementing abilities yeah like strength and also just the the oddness of different Mm -hmm. beings or paranormal beings or something. Mm-hmm. Super team. Um, oh my God, I had one that was pretty traditional and I, and it just slipped my mind completely. Now. Mm. Well, <laughs> they all mention, I think a couple of people mentioned in the comments of Bane's News Post, Jason the, and the Argonauts being a, a team of super friends. I don't know whether you'd uh, agree with that, but they had the whole bunch of like yeah. superheroes with uh, different mm-hmm. abilities. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, what is a super team? A super team basically is characters with complementary powers teaming up uh, either voluntarily or out of necessity necess- to deal with something like a big bad sort of thing yeah it can be a one story team up like mm-hmm. you were talking about at the beginning you know a crossover or a, a temporary team up or it can be an ongoing mm-hmm. thing yeah like the x-men where they all they're always a team yeah mm-hmm. except when they aren't and, and they are falling out <laughs> like a, 
Yeah. I mean, that's the great thing about an ongoing team. Yeah, you can have those mm -hmm. domestic squabbles. Yeah. I think maybe the Fantastic Four, definitely in the world of comics, spearheaded that mm -hmm. idea of the bickering family. And, mm -hmm. you know, they always come back together. And the X-Men definitely did that also with the found family kind of thing. And we As had... Tans talked about in her news post. Yeah. We had the greatest okay. team up ever, which was um, the the Drunk Duck versus Keen Space Civil War, <laughs> which we had years ago. Which which okay, so the the big Civil War thing was happening with um, Marvel Comics, mm -hmm. and so for some reason there were a whole group of uh, comicers, drunk duckers who wanted to do that. And that was started by mainly, I mean, this was back in the platinum, early platinum days. Mm -hmm. And this was started the very early platinum days. It was started by um, Zach, who was a drunk duck member, who I've met in person, and Riot, James Wright, who I've met in person as well. I've met both these people in person. It's amazing. So these guys and a whole bunch of other duckers sort of lived in the LA area and they would meet up at, um, uh, you know, what, what do you call them? Um, conferences? No, uh, co conventions, comic conventions. There we are. They meet up at comic conventions and stuff like this. And they decided one day when they got together that they would do uh, a Junk Duck versus Keen Space um, Civil War just to mirror the whole Civil War thing that was happening in Marvel Comics. And it was so cool. All the members, not all the members, but so many members of Drunk Duck got into it. And they we all faced off against these uh, Keen Space people. Or maybe it was Comic Genesis by then, I'm not sure. But that was, mm -hmm. that was pretty groovy. People were doing their own individual comics for it, like they did in cool. the Marvel um, thing. You know, you do your own little... Um, like I might do mine with my character versus uh, mm -hmm. some keen space people, and then some other people would do it as well, and then other people would get together who were doing like the main storyline and do those and fit characters in. It was a huge mm -hmm. project. It went nowhere, of course, as those things do, but it was amazing because at that particular stage in Drunk Duck, there were so many of these Heroes Alliance, not Heroes Alliance, but, uh, you know, Civil War comics that people would have mm -hmm. in their, their accounts. Like, you'd look at someone's comic account, they'd have their normal comic, and then they had this weird little Civil War comic that only went for five pages or something. You think, what the hell is that? And yeah. there's some <laughs> cool artwork in there, but the stories were all little non sequiturs that just went nowhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, it was super fun. And, and, and similarly... Uh, like in the old uh, old days of the of the duck, of drunk duck, uh, we also had fight explosion, mm -hmm. which was not like cross platform uh, fighting of heroes, but within the duck, like yeah. all the characters from different uh, comics by drunk duck people. Uh, were thrown together, like massed together in this uh, battle royale sort of setup, where they basically were, if I remember it right, because it's been a long, long time since then, <laughs> but um, uh, they got sort of uh, siphoned away, like warped away from their comic into this arena sort of uh, Mortal Kombat battle royale kind of thing uh, and they had to fight other characters but not everyone chose to fight or they fought in the beginning and then they got bored or they uh, got like the, their their duel was uh, uh, crushed by some third character and, and, and all sorts of weird chaotic things happened <laughs> which was amazing I, I absolutely loved the hell out of that uh, at the time, I was making Wolf, so I had this uh, character that could... I mean, my characters now could also participate in, in that sort of thing, that they would be not as heroic, they would do other things. <laughs> but um, back then, um, the main character, Zoe, was a, sort of a 
medically induced werewolf, so she wolfed out and did things. It was nice. It was fun. She wolfed out basically yeah. like Michael J. Fox in Teen Wolf. And not exactly, but close. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 she had like uh, she 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 had. I still like her design because it was a little bit unorthodox. Like she had this giant scythe out of nowhere. Like there, there, there was no reason for her to have this thing. And I reverse engineered the reason why she did have it. Um, and she had pigtails that I could draw in different ways depending on her mood. And it added a lot of movement to the character when she moved and fought and stuff. Yeah, I remember really- her. Mm-hmm. I remember her. She was all over the place back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> the dark eyeshadow too, I think. Oh. Like she had dark eyes that you always drew. Maybe you just did the outlines really dark around them. But yeah. No, I just did the very dark outlines. Uh, oh, yeah. No, no. She did have, like when she, she, when the virus took over and she had this super adrenaline burst and she was basically overpowered at the time. Mm. Uh, her, her eyes became bloodshot to the point that they were red and and sort of yellowish. And uh, because I often had no time, at the time I had no, I had no idea what I was doing as a comic artist <laughs> um, because I'm self-taught. And, and so I never had enough time to keep coloring it. And uh, I uploaded pencil pages and oh. that's why her eyes were blacked in in a sense uh, because it was the the bloodshot thing is happening. Yep, 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 yep. Drawing in pencil. Well, I never participated in too many team ups apart from the Drunk Duck Civil War and a couple of you know small things like we did the Drunk Duck Dodgeball. But that was really. I mean, I suppose that's a big team up. There were a few of us playing, which was mm-hmm. a really good kind of thing. Team ups are great fun, but what what are our favorite team ups in fiction or teams? The last Airbender team. Okay, mm-hmm. so that gradually forms over the long mm-hmm. period of the show. We start out with just with a tiny team of three, mm-hmm. and that gradually grows bigger. Yeah, for a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's basically found family, which is uh, a subset of of team ups, I guess. Um, but when you have the complete team, I think it is one of the most well balanced teams, and the, the the characters have really good chemistry with each other by mm-hmm. then, and uh, they really complement each other, and. Uh, one thing that I like about this team is that usually you have, you know, everyone is overpowered, magic people, uh, one way or the other, and you have the one person that is the regular human, <laughs> and and usually this character gets sidelined a lot. Uh, supposedly they are either the heart, so they are the cohesive unit, <laughs> oh, yeah. of, the other, mm-hmm. of all the other. Uh, you know, super powered people, or they are the the strategist mm. sort of guy. Yeah. So so they are basically support and in the sidelines. But in the last Airbender, the guy that is the non bender, the, the non magical guy, is uh, Soka, and and he is very much part of the action and part of the team because. He is a pretty awesome warrior and can hold his own against benders, which is really, really good. And he doesn't start that way. And you buy it that he can do it by the time that he does it. And of course, he is the comic relief, but in a tasteful way as well. So. Right. So he's the brother character who yeah. just goes along for the ride because his sister is a fantastic waterbender, if I remember. Yes. Or ice. I think it's water. Water, water bender. Yeah. And Which also it's... means eyes as well, because it does eyes a lot. Yeah, and all sorts of things. So they mm-hmm. they team up with the um the airbender, who is uh, 
who can bend all elements. That's the secret. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> the avatar. Yes. Well, exactly. it, if it's a spoiler now, you have been under a rock and we're not sorry for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, there's a couple of different versions of the whole thing. So it's, um, yeah, that's a good little team. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, one of my favorites that I mentioned in the uh, Drunk Duck video for our patrons, which is a new HD video because we use Zoom this time, not the shitty screen recording software that I've been using for the other first stuff. <laughs> but uh, for this one, yeah, I mentioned um, Journey to the West and my favorite incarnation, which which is what I grew up with, which was called Monkey Magic, a Japanese version of Journey to the West, but it's all dubbed in English and it's so cool. Um, and Journey to the West, what is that? Well, we have the monkey god, monkey, have uh, the, the fish god, uh, the, the pig god, and uh, Tripitaka, the Buddhist monk who has you know, various special sutras and things like this and um, can speak directly to Buddha. So that's pretty amazing powers. They all have these cool powers and cool magical abilities and things. And they complement each other and they get into scrapes and mm -hmm. fight demons and monsters all the time. I, I love that show. It's so cool. But there's a lot yeah. of different versions. Of course, there's Dragon Ball Z, mm -hmm. which was based on, on it and other things and yeah, they're good team up. There is a, a, a Korean drama that is basically that. Uh, it's Journey to the West, but it is uh, brought to modern times. And uh, the role of Tripitaka is, is played by this girl that basically bring, brings together all the semi, like all the, all, all the demigods and, and the monkey king and stuff. And uh, they they do form a team in the end, and it is glorious. If you like K dramas, go watch it. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, yeah, I think it's one of the best adaptations out there. So ah, uh, they're so much fun. The the whole Monkey King stuff. Mm -hmm. There's so many. I love so many the he, He's awesome as a character. He's such a a, a great character <laughs> because he's a little twat, but he also <laughs> has uh, this journey character, like hero's journey of his own, uh, and and he's always overpowered, basically. And uh, I love that. Like he's, he's overpowered, and he's still a twat. And and that is his his um, weakness basically. He's cool. I mean, the whole story is that he starts out as being the best of the best. He doesn't have to grow mm -hmm. into that or um, mm -mm. work out how to do it or train or anything like that. He's already the greatest ever. He just gets some magical weapons to make himself even better. Like he can fly in a cloud, and he gets this staff that can grow to massive proportions, and he. Mm -hmm. works out how to make himself giant and, and he gets these um things to help him live forever like peaches or something royal peaches from depending the of i mean depends on what part of the journey to the west this happens uh, but the biggest uh, thing that i like about him is that he is he gets into trouble that he basically creates himself like if he was like more straight-laced character, let's say. He would not have half of the problems that he runs into. Um, and I love that. It's like, you are your own biggest enemy. <laughs> yeah, he's a great traditionally flawed character. He's not a Mary yeah. Sue. You know, he, no. he gets these items in the beginning of the story to make mm -hmm. himself even, even more super-powered. But that's the he beginning of the story. And for the rest of it, he's just a little douche who, yeah. <laughs> who messes up and has fun. Yeah. But deep down, and, and his saving grace is that he, although he pretends that he doesn't care and he's very self-serving and stuff, he still cares. And, and you can see it. Like when the chips are down, he, he does what he needs to do. But after a lot of stuff, 
first day Japanese. <laughs> and I especially loved the Japanese version that I watched as a kid, you know, mm. Magic. It was so cool. It had uh, starred Masaki Saki, who was mm-hmm. this, um, like, one of the gods of Japanese TV. He became, you know, a pr- presenter and did all sorts of stuff for decades and decades. Like, he was one of the main guys in Japanese TV. But uh, he started out in, a, like, a pop band back in the mm-hmm. 60s called The Spiders. And it was one of these, like the Beatles. It was that kind of level of mm-hmm. famous in Japan. So that's so cool. Oh. Trippy Taka was played by oh. this lovely um, woman who um, unfortunately got leukemia and died, but she was um, mm-hmm. very, very much loved. Uh, the band who did the music, Go Diego, were this excellent, excellent, cool um, Japanese band, a Japanese and American band, actually, who were the first... Um, non-Chinese band to um, perform in China back, you know, when they were still in the bad old days of communism, you know, and everyone's riding bikes and stuff like that. So um, a lot of good history. Anyway, sorry, Tans, what were you going to say? No, no, I was like, um, all of these, we are taking down memory lane. Um, speaking of uh, of super teams, do you remember G-Force? I love another- that. Oh, yeah. It was one of my favorite ones for Saturday morning. Battle of I the Planets, would... also known. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had we also knew it as a Gachaman. Yeah, that's uh, the, oh. probably the original name. Yeah, uh, yeah because uh, in in Greece you either get uninspired weird titles that have nothing to do with the original or just the original. Never something in the middle. <laughs> um, but I absolutely loved that. I remember I would wake up at 6 a.m. on a Saturday just to watch it because for some reason they had it super early. It was the first it was the first show of Saturday. Well, it was uh, it was so cool because all the other animations were just either super distorted crap from Hanna Barbera. I'm specialized mm. in that. And I, most American stuff did at the time. Um, all this Japanese stuff, which was just, we didn't call it anime back then because that didn't exist for us. It was just mm-hmm. the cool looking animations because the people would actually look like humans, which was so cool. Yeah. And, in and this... they had, they also had like cool backgrounds. Uh, like oh. it wasn't. Like your state up, oh, we are heroes, let's go fight the big bad, which they did do that. But uh, Ace Goodhart was the, like, that corny name. Um, he was the hero, <laughs> like the leader of the of the team. And, <laughs> um, but he was so flawed. He had such issues that he had to, that he had to resolve uh, with his father, with the uh, stuff that happened, the foul play that happened in his background, with uh, whether he wanted to be in the team in the first place at all. Mm-hmm. And then um, uh, at some point he uh, he has this thing going on with a, with a pink guardian, of course, with a girl that always yeah. is in pink. Uh, but uh, that also doesn't work out very easily. I remember I was fascinated. I loved it. And I think that it, it was one of the first animes, cartoons, because it wasn't an anime back then, yeah, um, where the characters got hurt, like even just a little bit, like they just got knocked out. But for me, that was like mind blown. You mm-hmm. know, was... characters get hurt, <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> It's a very good anime because it um, it was really a prototype for a lot of stuff that would come later. Mm. Um, it's a cool 70s look to it as well. I love the hairstyles yeah. and all that and the flares. <laughs> but the characters, you have a team that is, um, okay, so you've got the, the leader, which is what you mm-hmm. always have, who is the the best of the best, you know, Ace Goodheart or yeah. Justin White. Best great laced hero. Then you have the second in command, who is like yeah. the angry guy who you think's going to yeah. take over, Mark or something. Just in yeah, red. the foil. You have the foil, basically. Yeah. Then you have the the lunk, you know, the hunk, whatever it is, the big, tall, not not usually tall, but fattish, kind of thick 
yeah. kind of big heavy guy. Set guy. Heavy set, there. Yeah. Mesomorph, yeah. And then you have the little kid. I think he's called Pidge or something. I don't know. He was. Um, I don't remember. I hated him. I didn't like. <laughs> you all the kid, and then the 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 lady character. But you had that mm-hmm. in everything in Voltron, whatever. Mm-hmm. Robotech, mm-hmm. you know, they're always the same kind of group. Silver, um, silver hawks. Yeah, yeah, just everything, always yeah. same, same bloody setup. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. I think it is a trope. I, I mean, by now it is a trope that you have like the the team of five, where you have like the leader, the foil, the backup usual technician, the girl, because the girl's character is girl, <laughs> and and the kid or, you know, the comic relief, the gadget, the critter, you know, what have you. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that it's an old trope, though. I don't think they still use that in, in that form anymore. Yeah. It's changed. You'd be surprised. <laughs> I, it, was, it was cool for when it was around, but... Um, it was new back then. I, I mean... Yeah. I, Personally, I remember I had I had never seen it before, like this. Yeah, um, exactly. That was that was the beginning of it. Though I mean, if they do have that kind of thing now, it would be updated to our modern tastes and traditions. Mm-hmm. So instead of having hey, one you'd girl, have we might have all girls. Yeah. yeah, but you would. They would still feel like tend to gravitate to certain roles. I mean, it could be all girls, but you would still have one that is more of the leader, the other one that is more of the the lancer, at least, like the second in command, and then you would have everyone else. The mom type, the one that takes care, it could be a guy, but they would he would still be the mom of the, mm-hmm. of the group, like taking care of everyone else, and so on. Yeah, yeah, it's a great way of setting up a team when you have them fitting into different tropes, not just different yeah. powers, but different personalities and yeah. abilities and stuff like that. So, and I just realized now uh, that in Without Moonlight, I start with a team like that, and then I basically <laughs> did more it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, you did. You set up the team and you failed it right away. Yeah. Completely. It wasn't intentional, though. Just now that I'm thinking about it, they do have this, like, I do have this sort of setup, and then it's like, bam, team gone. <laughs> oh, well, you know, when you're big and famous with uh, Without Moonlight, then you'll be paid to do a spin off just for kids, and it'll just be the Leapers no, living in their barrels, no. and that will all be the Saturday morning. I will morning never do that. Like, I will never do that. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> like, no. uh, I just need enough money to make it worth your while, Tans. That's all. I don't know. I mean, I guess never is a big word, but still, I would never do that. Like, I could, I could create something similar, but not in World War Two and not like that. Five hundred thousand dollar advance. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm not doing. I'm not doing it in World War Two, but I will make a simulation if you like for that money. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! All right. Well, in traditional comics, we have things that have been really popular lately. Um, Suicide Squad. That just keeps. Mm coming back for some reason you know people love that a whole harley quinn crap and um that just just keeps on coming back i like harley quinn but she's not a traditional comic character she started out in the animation apparently in the um the the 90s or maybe early to no must have been the late 90s um i don't know when it was it was fairly recent anyway <laughs> In the, the, the cartoons on TV, that's where she came from. And then they put her back in the comp, you know, into the comics from there, which is interesting. And she's the, the big the anchor behind that, the Suicide Squad um, movies. And that's enormously popular. I mean, the first one was 
people weren't so happy about it because of the portrayal of the Joker, I think. They didn't like Jared Leto as the Joker. Mm. They thought he was yeah. a bit weird. It's, it's not a bad film. I've seen it twice, and it's not as bad as people say at all. And then the uh, the new version of the film, and of course then the character has come back in The Birds of Prey, uh, Harley Quinn, with a whole bunch of other um, DC sort of superheroes, villainish kind of characters all together. And those are quite interesting, those those are movies they're quite fun you know um dc has had a lot of misses with their films superman and batman or whatever they haven't really had the legs to keep on going but those films you know birds of prey and the suicide squad films they've all all been pretty watchable pretty entertaining i don't know if you guys have seen them but they're, they're good team-up films i'd recommend you know um if you're in the mood for something fun and silly and no brain and you don't mind a bit of um, violence because they're quite violent then check them out they're, they're pretty good films yeah these are you know, anti-heroes at best or mm-hmm. even villains who are forced together in the case of the suicide squad you know captured villains who are forced together to go on these missions yeah. where they're expendable um, yeah. yeah 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 anti-heroes but still you know people dressed up in costumes teaming up <laughs> having yeah. Yeah. superpowers <laughs> and they're, they're a lot of fun uh let's see the whole up oh, well the marvel films we can't forget that no so they those started out with of course iron man back in what 2000 eight and then ten whatever that was no probably about 2008 or something i don't know so they started out with iron man and they didn't really know how successful that was going to be but they were sort of betting that it would be but it became so much more successful and started a whole just yeah started to own film <laughs> influence everything after that But it wasn't going to be a team-up necessarily. It was just going to sort of be maybe a one-off. But they always wanted it to be a team-up eventually. So they were kind of um, hinting at at that at the end Mm -hmm. of those ones. And they just kept going with it. And then eventually we got the Avengers, which was the big team-up. And that was fantastic. So we got the Avengers. Yeah. And then they kept on going. A good Mm -hmm. number of the uh, comics, the same characters that that made up the Avengers in the comics, did the, were the same as in the movies not all but most that was pretty cool right yeah and, and the avengers was like strong standalone characters who have all had their own comics their own identities previously then you know combining them into the avengers that's pretty yeah. cool and and uh, the many movies gave them the the time to flesh out the characters before throwing them together in team up, so people didn't need introductions in a sense, right? Yeah, having seen the previous ones. Um, sort of, yeah. Except for so the the Black Widow, um, Hawkeye, and the Hulk didn't get their own movies i mean hulk had had two movies before but they weren't part of this Mm -hmm. modern marvel thing they were sort of just their own things um and of course the black widow has since had her own film which was pretty good and hawkeye i don't know maybe he's still gonna get one i'm not sure i'm not sure yeah, I, I can't say I really followed absolutely every film. Um, I'm a heathen like that, I guess. Um, <laughs> well, but, can, there's so many. Yeah, and honestly, there are, I, I, I'm very hit and miss with these movies in the sense that not that they are bad movies or, you know, whatever. I think it's just the, like in the comics, there were some characters that always got my my interest and I followed their stories a little more and others that I just couldn't be bothered with and I don't think it has to do with 
with the material itself, just my tastes. So, yeah, like I, I couldn't find it in me to, to watch absolutely everything. So, yeah. Oh, the, uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. So that's a sub team within the whole Avengers, not Avengers, um, with all, all these all these other teams and groups and stuff like that. The Guardians of the Galaxy is just a movie about a little team, mm -hmm. and that was fun. I like that yeah. one. I loved. Yeah, I've seen mm -hmm. the the second one, and um, then they have appearances in Civil War or, or no, no. In, um, in in the um, end game, yeah, they're not so great in that, but <laughs> they're might much better in their in their two standalone, well, in their two own films. But yeah, there's teams within teams within teams, and then they everyone's teaming up to fight the civil war, and then fight teaming up to fight um, Thanos. So yeah, it's just. Mega so teams. what do you, let's say, what do you like about them? But what that, what do you look for in in team maps of characters? Me? Mm. Wow, I don't know. Everybody <laughs> being sort of individual. If everyone's like a like a group of soldiers, where you know they're all kind of like. So a group of soldiers are just sort of fighting to achieve the same objective, and they're not really having you know people aren't really standing out when they're a group of soldiers you might have like different personalities in something like i don't know saving private ryan or mm -hmm. um band, of, band of brothers or fury or something like that there's different personalities but they're really just different faces on the same kind of people yeah who are just all together to achieve the same goal and they're just working with the same kind of skills so I suppose in a team up of uh, heroic characters, you're looking for people who are really different coming together to support each other's weaknesses and you know to enhance each other's strengths and stuff like that. And that's really what you want to see. Like, but not just those differences. You want to see completely different costumes. You want to see completely different personalities and just looks to everybody and approaches. And the more different, the better, I think. What do you guys reckon about teams like that? Yeah, well, I agree. I think like the appeal of a super team is um, different abilities. All the characters are at least somewhat different, different abilities and hopefully different personalities. And um, tying into my Wizard of, the, of Oz diatribe, like different properties. So even if it's not, like the neat thing about um, the X-Men, probably my favorite team in comics, mm. is some of the specifics of how they function together. Um, I mean, they butt heads also. I look for that, like sort of their personalities rub each other wrong or they sometimes they do get along and um, certain tactics they use, but... The, the properties thing, like the, the Cyclops character in the original X-Men shoots lasers from his eyes, beams of force. And he, uh, but he had some kind of childhood accident where he can't control it. So he has to wear this special equipment to keep it from constantly firing, and, you know, hurting someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it makes him a more isolated kind of guy. Um, Wolverine was interesting much later with the new team when he came along because he they started giving him all of these interesting ins and outs like the the claws that he was introduced with turn out to be not his power they're <laughs> artificially put in his body along with metal bones so he has bones that can't break and this healing power and these animal senses and and also he was developed to be this much older character than they thought at first, where he's really been around and he's seen horrible things and he's been through horrible trauma, all this stuff. And then you have him interacting with these younger characters. Um, the, the tactics they developed in battle because of all their training, awesome stuff at their best. It's really neat. And um, I think I'm rambling, but yeah. 
No, it's every no. word is, is worthwhile. Yeah. I love it. Mm-hmm. Because this is new information to me because I haven't read all the back stuff about the um, the X-Men and where they came from and all that kind of stuff. I just remember, like, a, it's, it's... Okay, so Cyclops is Canadian and I think... um. No. Uh, well, no, then. it's not. I thought he was. Well, Wolverine Wolver is. Wolverine's Canadian, yeah. Okay. I thought there was a bit of a Canadian thing to them. Probably some well, that was interesting. With the, program. Like the new X-Men, which I think came along in around 75 or something like that. Yeah. If I'm right about that. Um, the original team were all American teenagers, and they were – I love them. I love their uniforms and their different powers. They more or less got along well, and, um, you know, Cyclops was a more serious guy. The Beast, they gave him a genius-level intellect and uh, also fun-loving. He's one of my favorite characters, um, and so on. But anyway, when they, they brought in the, a new team, that comic series always struggled, I think. I don't think it ever did very well. But they, um, when they brought in this new team, they wanted to make them international. So they went all around the world. They had this Storm uh, being from Africa. Storm from Africa, yeah. Colossus was Russian. Hmm. Um, Wolverine, Canadian. Nightcrawler, German. Hmm. And uh, they had an indigenous character also, Thunderfoot. I want to say Thunderfoot? Is that his name? Would that be right? Hmm. Anyway, um, yeah, he was. Yeah, his, yeah, something. Thunder something, I think. Um, and that's. Oh, and uh, Banshee from Ireland. So they had this sort of collection from around the world. So, and most of the... I mean, there's, there was a core group that stayed. Some of the characters left pretty quickly because the team was a bit too big, I think. But, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, yeah. and So a big ensemble cast, which is one of the cool things you can do with these kind of teams because you can have different character sort of moving into the spotlight focus on this character and then focus on that character so they're not always having to work as a team in every single episode of the thing you yeah just bring one to the front bring the rest to the back or all that kind of stuff so it's a good way of doing it and then people coming into the group and people moving out which you know it's totally open for that as well that's great. I love that kind of thing and like having this sense of a long history, which is a lot easier when you actually do have a long history <laughs> of comics that are coming out over decades. Um, yeah, and at least yeah, some really of the films yeah. are actually, um, you know, paying a bit of a. Well, they're actually acknowledging that, which is good. Yep. Yeah. In various ways. They do. Yes. Really need to catch up with the X Men films again. <laughs> they they definitely have their highs and their high highs and their low lows, to say the least. Oh yeah, wasn't that that terrible one where they introduced um uh, what's his name the Merc with the mouth um uh, Deadpool. That was a really shit one. Oh, right, but it was a really strange version of Deadpool for some reason. Yeah, stitched yeah. up mouth. Right. Very it's odd. Spinning <laughs> swords like fans. It's just strange. Like, what was the point in that? Um, But entertaining nonetheless. <laughs> oh, Ryan Reynolds? Is that the actor? Yeah. Yeah, so they got him to do the, the rebooted Deadpool as well. Which was well, his, I mean, this is off topic, but uh, yeah, he's a big Deadpool fan. So that's why he played oh. the character in that that X-Men movie, or was it the Wolverine movie or something? And uh, mm. to get the Deadpool solo movie going, it was really him. who like, He was the champion of making that, getting it going. And well, yeah, good on him for doing that, making it oh, yeah, man. his own. Yeah. But he's already been in the Green Lantern movie, and people hated that for some reason. It's a bit too much CGI in that, but it wasn't a bad film. I didn't see it. Oh, really? 
Yeah. That's universally hated, even more than the, the <laughs> first Deadpool one. It was famously bad. I mean, I love Marvel Comics, and Green Lantern is DC, but I love comics, but even I have not seen nearly all of the movie films. Right. It's funny as oh, I it's... don't bother with. Very hard to do it, but yeah, yeah, it's it's not really a bad film. Like a lot of these things, it's just people's reactions. It would be interesting to find out why people hate that film so much. It would really be. I mean, but this isn't a thing about films. This is about teams. <laughs> it's the Green, Green Lantern Corps. Apparently, it was <laughs> armies and legions of Green Lanterns in the universe. Yeah, I don't know much figure. about that series, but yeah, I, I think just the movie just didn't set it up very well. Uh, I remember when I was watching it, it just didn't really. I mean, it 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 felt cheap, I I guess I would say, although it's by no means cheap, but it felt cheap a little bit, like a a little bit like a school play. That tries to pose uh, as a movie. <laughs> I think that was more the, the problem than the material itself. But I could be wrong. I don't know. Well, there's a lot of over the top, super colorful uh, CGI, which yeah. was just too much. But apart from that, I didn't mind it. Um, so yeah, what other teams can we bring up before we have to finish the quack cast? Because Google's telling us we have seven minutes to go. Mm -hmm. Well, we could mention again uh, the Fellowship of the Ring. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got a fantasy team. Good old Boroma, who doesn't live very long, but uh, he's, he's <laughs> a pretty cool sword fighter. Aragorn, which he, he's um, the dark hero kind mm -hmm. of character the hobbits which only come into their own pretty late in the story i think yeah they're just a bunch of comic relief fellows uh gimli the dwarf who's so awesome legolas the, the hero last... elf yeah. gandalf of course can't forget him mm -hmm. Super cut angel uh, yeah yeah <laughs> i am I think that the the special thing about the Fellowship of the Ring is that you have this team and the leader is not super clear who it is because you have uh, Gandalf calling some of the shots. You have um, um, Aragorn. Spider, Aragorn, yeah, calling some of the other shots. But then, in the end, if things come to an impasse, the one who breaks the tie, the one that calls the ultimate shots, is Frodo. So, uh, who is the leader out of all these guys? Uh, so, you could say that you have this trifecta of leadership in this pretty large team. And... Uh, or you could argue that it's not really a team because some people in there have ulterior motives, like Boromir, who wants to take the ring for himself. Uh, the hobbits are on for the right, basically, because why not? At this mm -hmm. point, uh, they haven't yet uh, developed agency uh, uh, as much as they do later. And, um, yeah, the other guys are a little bit fringe, and they come into their own only after the team breaks up. But that said, as a team, they do work well together. And they do, at least I am convinced that they are a team. Like for any external threat, they would do a good job of protecting each other. Hmm. Uh, so there's, there's that. And I think that this is quite unique. I mean... In terms of, as far as teams go. Yeah, it's a great fantasy team, which you don't see very much of in this stuff. Oh, mm -hmm. I mean, Conan the Destroyer had a great little uh, team up of various characters. Now that is a pretty cool team up 
of bizarre fantasy overpowered characters. You've got Conan, you've got uh, Bombata, played by Will Chamberlain, Chamberlain, who's just fantastic with his huge beaked mace. Then we've got uh, the Grace Jones character. I can't remember what she was called, but she was just amazing. Um, we have the wizard, played by Mako, with his fantastic voice. Um, that's that's a really fun film. With a, a team up of fantasy, super bad fantasy characters. Love it. A uh, bit silly compared to the Conan the Barbarian, but it's it's a lot of fun when we're talking about fantasy. Ah, teams, teams. Well, I grew up with Super Friends. That was my favorite team when I was a really little kid. And of course, she, uh, She-Ra, He-Man, uh, the Thundercats, mm-hmm. which we already mentioned. Um, He-Man was fantastic. He-Man, of course, construct meant to have been an animated version of Conan, but they couldn't get the rights, so they developed their own thing. And, oh well, He-Man is good as it is. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, more modern ones. Uh, Steven Universe. Fantastic cartoon series. Mm-hmm. Whereas you've got this team of the gems with all the different powers. That's really cool. I love Steven Universe. I haven't been able to find a streaming service for it, unfortunately. But I'll catch up with that eventually. Mm-hmm. So there we are, teams. Yay. More comic teams is, is what we need. Yes. Tell us, if you have listened to this point, tell us about teams that you like from comics or web comics in the comments. Mm, and do your own team. Just yeah. team up. Or do your own team, yeah. Do your your super team of perfect like your perfect team. Invincible team. <laughs> All right. Well we'll we'll talk about something for our Christmas cast next week. Yay. Bye guys. Bye. Bye bye. Best Bye-bye. of the season. Oh, yes. oh. Deck the halls with <laughs> bowels of holly. La 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 la. La 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 Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. Don we now our gay apparel. Fa la 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 la.